were trying to create our own modular course, Living Christianity, to get people talking using inclusive theological methods about the Christian life. Developing that at the moment, so again, watch the web. But then lastly, we also received good feedback that many people are looking not for another single issue protest group, but for one which is deliberately multi-focused, knowing that the outworking of the gospel of inclusion is never, ever over, and that we prevent ourselves taking on a victim identity, which is also easy to do, whether we're gay or black or female or poor in the church, we cannot take on a victim identity simply by seeing that the person in the next boat is usually in as much deep water as we are, but in all likelihood over a different issue which more affects their own life. I was very moved when I came, I think we used this room, to meet your feminist theology group before they came down to help us at Lambeth. I was terribly moved to hear their reasons for being involved in inclusive church to the level of coming to work with us at Lambeth. Um, hardly any of them were straightforward, hardly any of them were to do with the sort of hot political topics of the day, but they all had individual reasons for understanding what it feels like to be excluded, which of course we all have. There is a lot of work to do, work which we want to outline on our fifth birthday, birthday and get your ideas and blessing on our route forwards. It's work also for which we desperately need funding, so you'll find in our leaflets tonight standing order forms in case you feel you can sponsor us regularly with however small a sum. If you're an expert in creating fundraising events and are willing to take one on, or you know about grant-making foundations to whom we can apply, then please come up to me afterwards and tell me, or see Giles or Pog at the end. But meanwhile, back to our particular theme for tonight. In the period following the first ordinations of women to the priesthood of the Church of England, there was, I think, a brooding sense of disappointment in the air. What had it all been for? What difference were women making? Hadn't we women priests simply become honorary men and left the development of lay women in the Church outside it completely in the cold. Even as much as 10 years later, I would say we were not absolutely sure about what difference we had made in anything much but our own lives and parishes. That is certainly not the case now. Now we're in the middle of one of those really exciting periods of time for women to be alive in the Church of England because two changes, or movements if you like, are being developed even as we speak and with the women who are here tonight. Women are now taking senior leadership roles within the international and national church. And before long, there will be women consecrated to be bishops in England. One person who's worked almost her whole adult life to see this happen is Christina Rees, writer and broadcaster chair of National Watch, and to our great pride, a trustee of Inclusive Church. She's here to tell us what's happening on that score. But at the same time as that is going on, other women are questioning, particularly in their writing, what it means to be woman-shaped and holy. Might there be prophetic words we want to speak to church and society about the inclusion of our whole lives? in our journey with God? Might we be needing to explore other images for God than those most familiar to us after 2,000 years of male church history? Might we yearn for other ways of expressing and experiencing the holy? And I'm absolutely delighted that Rosemary Lane Priestley is able to come along to, if you like, represent, represent that other side of women in the church. Rosemary, too, is a writer and broadcaster, and like Christina, a famous contributor to Thought for the Day. She's also Dean of Women for the Two Cities area of the London Diocese, and as such, is on the Standing Committee of the National Association of Diocesan Advisors for Women in Ministry. So she's well placed to hear what many women may be saying. 
Christina and Rosemary, of course, can't be typecast in that way. They each do what the other does as well. But they nevertheless do stand, I think, for those two main strands within the church. So we're going to move over now to Christina addressing us. And after that, there'll be time for some questions to her. And then Rosemary and some questions to her. Then we'll have a couple more questions at this time. But then I want to hear to, from you what your questions are about women in the Church of England, in church and society, what you're asking. But now over to Christina. Thank you. 